a turkey day tradition returns to Motown. It's the coach. This is a special holiday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, it will be the 80th Thanksgiving Day game in Detroit as the Lions get set for the second straight year to play host to their NFC North rivals, the Chicago Bears. I'll see you again at halftime, but first we're off to Ford Field. Standing by, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First open in 2002, there's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Both teams emerging from the Ford Field tunnels just a short time ago. And of course, the loudest cheers were reserved for the hometown Lions. They're set to go as they will match up with the Chicago Bears. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. And they've lost three straight here. And it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Bears, they were winners last time out. So they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. It's all about football all the time as we're underway here in week 13. This is fielded at the goal line. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6'4 quarterback. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way and he sees himself an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that and that's something he's gonna focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator said right off the top, he's got great footwork, love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A first carry for the converted wideout, J.D. McKissick. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And now the offense for Detroit. And this certainly doesn't seem like an ideal situation for them because they're coming in on a losing streak and they've got the quick turnaround right here to Thursday night. But maybe that's for the best. Get right back on the horse and go at it again and not dwell on the losing that they've had in recent weeks. On second down, Johnson. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. He'll get a dozen there and the Lions have a first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. Looking to throw. Washington. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. This crew against the pass issues at times, ranked number 24, Charles, in the NFL. And I think you're going to see some changes in the offseason, whether it's through the draft, free agency, maybe even both. They definitely need some help in the secondary. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They'll run with McKissick. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And did he get in? No, down at the one-yard line. A big play there for Detroit. 43 yards on the ground. So close, couldn't get all the way in, knocking on the doorstep down to the one. Nevertheless, fantastic run. Not only that, this is where you wave to your replacement. Go back to the bench. No way. I'm not coming out of this game. I got it down to the one-yard line. I want to carry it in. We'll see if they reward him on this next play. At 
After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Back to throw. Washington under pressure now, and he's going to go down just inside the five-yard line. Khalil Mack, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. On any first and goal, the real estate to work with for the offense is really cut down, and the defense knows it. So they often bring heat and pressure, which they did on this play. Got him down for a loss. Not a big one, but any loss of yardage in this position is tough for an offense. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Second and four. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. J.D. McKissick, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Lions take it right down and score on the opening drive. With these Thursday night games, sometimes you get those quick turnarounds. You wonder how a team is going to start. They started really well. Everyone's always wondering, going into a Thursday night game, who has their legs, who has a, you know the overall health of a team. But mentally, if you get that early edge, the other team might think to itself, ah, oh, it's been a short week. We're not really ready to go. You might run them into the ground that way. That's why getting that early score means a lot. Now Matt Prater for the point after. It's up, it's good, and the Lions lead 7-0. So that drives seven plays in length, and the end result, a Detroit touchdown. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. So here come the Bears under second-year coach Matt Nagy. And they'll be let out by the guy under center Charles, their quarterback. And what's a quarterback's best friend? Balance? I think you're right. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, a lot of guys would say great receiver, right? A terrific offensive line. But I agree with you. Balance. Because if you can run the ball effectively, that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages to read. And they said balance will be a focus in this one. Yeah, they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders, I don't believe. I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That one good for 37 yards. This is a little bit like baseball here. Strong up the middle. Both sides want to be that. In this case, the offense ended up winning the ultimate battle. And those big runs between the tackles, that's a little deflating for a defense, isn't it? It really is because that's where your strength's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a spot where they can't make that yardage there. You're supposed to send them outside. Not in this case. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And now a look at the offense for Chicago. And congratulations on their win last week, but they didn't get a whole lot of time to celebrate it on Sunday. They were right back to work on Monday, but you'll have to do things differently when you prepare for a Thursday night game because normally you'll take some time off. Here you get right back to work, work on the game plan mentally, and probably not put any pads on until you play again Thursday night. And a pretty good run as he'll get this down close to a first at the Lions 33. Well, look now at our starting defense. They enter play here 24th in the league against the run. And the focus now is making sure that they're hitting on all cylinders as they head into the playoffs. And that means they've got to stop the run better because playoff football often means running football. So they've got to be prepared for that. On third and two. Washington. He's got his tight end, Burton. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Trey Burton, his fourth touchdown on the year as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Brandon, they just got the ball, and already they're in the end zone, and you're getting ready to talk about the PAT. That was fast.
Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. A drive there of just four plays, and the end result is a Bears touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> that what he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> On the ground, this is Johnson. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. These two teams all tied after one. The first down carry here for Johnson. It's a seven yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Second down, it's Johnson. And he's gonna be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain that time as it's gonna leave him with a third and about three to go. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. Yeah, boy, from up here, I don't think Johnson got there. No, he did not. They were ahead of schedule after the gain of seven on first down, but the defense does not budge on second and third. I know they want to go for it here, and I know that their fans want them to go for it, but listen, I'm going to play head coach right here and look at the facts. Tie game, plus, even if you get the first, you still got a half a field to go. I go ahead and punt the football myself. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Excellent placement, and off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy, the other team's going to be unhappy. So, what do they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how do they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, that's you, partner. They'll start things on first with Torrey Cohen. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Back to the ground, this time Montgomery. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Out of the gun, running with Cohen. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. Tracy Walker in on the tackle. Four. It's now a second and 
to throw on second down. Washington. It's caught. It's Miller. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Catch number 44 of on the year. It's a first down. Off play action. Washington. This one into the hands of Burton. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. First down, a run with Cohen. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling. And happy. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Looking to throw. Washington. He'll leave it for Cohen. Complete. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Tariq Cohen with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Bears have taken the lead. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. Now Parkey for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So this drive spans seven plays, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And they'll have good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Back onto the field comes the offense. Let's take a closer look at Carrion Johnson. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue. And is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. I know some teams are leery about playing cover two because a strong safety is not usually a terrific cover guy. But in this case, he played it perfectly. Read the football and went and made the interception. A reminder, if you think we're done after this, you are so wrong. We've got the Bills and Cowboys in the traditional Thanksgiving afternoon game in Dallas, and then one more after that to top it all off. The Saints and the Falcons from Atlanta, 8 Eastern. Finish your turkey, finish your pie, and watch us. Throwing to start the drive. Washington. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. 
as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. On first and ten, Washington. And this is Gabriel on the catch. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeout as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Second and three. Gets this to his running back, Tariq Cohen. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. First down, Washington. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Throwing again, Washington. Open man, Taylor Gabriel. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. We're going to get a timeout with two seconds it. remaining in the second quarter. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. This from 54 yards away. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and CD in a minute. First, it's time to take a look at what we've got coming your way this weekend in the NFL. One of the best of the early games, we'll highlight it there. The Giants in for a stern test at home at MetLife Stadium as they'll take on the always tough Green Bay Packers. More good stuff later in the afternoon. One being down in the desert, where it'll be the Cardinals at home in Glendale, taking on the L.A. Rams. And finally, on Sunday Night Football, we wrap up Thanksgiving weekend with a couple of teams that have gotten to know each other in the playoffs, the Patriots and Texans from Houston. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team. Of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, coach, appreciate it. A one touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24 yard line. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show him one thing, hit him with something else. Now Cohen. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Now a shotgun handoff to Cohen. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Looking to throw on second down. Washington. And this is going to be caught. 
He won the fight for the football. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 30. They had two tight ends in the formation on that one. It looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 30-yard line. This is Cohen on the toss. And some room to roam now. Touchdown, Chicago! Tariq Cohen with his second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season, as the Bears push further out in front. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Parkey adds the extra point, and it's now 21-7. to so that drive, four plays. And a long run there in the end to top it off. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. Eddie Jackson with a tackle. To throw on second down. Washington, wide open receiver complete. And they worked this well upfield across the 45. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. They'll run on first down. Johnson, they'll get three up to midfield. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now a 10th carry for Johnson. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. It's a gain of 10 for the Lions and a first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Throwing on first down. Washington. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. It's a gain of 14 and a first down for Detroit. On first and 10, Washington over the middle, and it's incomplete. Looking to go back to Thomas again, and it's second down. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. They go back to the ground with Johnson. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave them with a third down and six to go. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw, Washington. And this is going to be incomplete. Maybe a little over anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. 
So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. This is taken at the three. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. This is Cohen. Space to maneuver at the 40. And all the way up to the 45-yard line. First down for the Bears, a gain of 15. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Yeah, let's get set. All that, and it only nets him a yard. It's second down. Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's Bears football here. They also have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Looking to throw on second down. Washington, the screen pass here to Cohen. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 14 yards into Chicago first down. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10, right at the 40. Draw play, Cohen. And he gets this to the 35, good for a gain of five. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They try again with Cohen. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. First down, Cohen. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Looking to throw. Washington. And yeah, that's caught for a bear touchdown. It's the tight end, Trey Burton. Trey Burton with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year as the Bears push further out in front. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. Parkey with the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told, and the end result is a Bears touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. 
Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First down, Lions on a pickup of 13. On first down, Washington. He'll get this one to Galladay. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Second and two. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. The Lions on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. Back to throw. Washington, and he'll find Galladay. That's complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag, that guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Looking to throw. Washington. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Back to throw. Washington. He's going to let it fly. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Adrian Amos, the safety, able to make the play. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. On fourth down, Washington. It's caught, Jones. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. First down for the Lions on a nice pickup of 18 yards. Looking to throw, Washington. He gets this into the hands of Taylor. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Back-to-back -back nice gains, that one for 14 yards and another first. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to come back to you. Operating from the gun, Washington. His pass caught at the four. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. From six yards away. And the Lions are able to cut into this lead. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play review. drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Partner, they're less than two minutes ago in the game, which means that this challenge was initiated by the fellows in New York. And if you're the coach, you're thinking, thank you, New York. Back 
to throw. Washington looking in zone, but it's incomplete. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. From the gun, Washington. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. A field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth. On fourth down, Washington. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Chicago defense able to come up with a goal line stand. They'll run on first down. Cohen. And he'll find a little space. He gets us up near the 10. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And maybe more importantly, a victory in the division, which always helps. And on the road. How about all of that rolled up into one? Because how often do you see division games get decided by this much of a margin? Yeah, Most they time, them. Yeah, they jumped all over them. And a division game is usually a touchdown or less because these two teams know each other better than most teams in the league. In this case, that didn't hold up. On the road, big margin, big victory. Oh, yeah, that flight home will be good. So for the Bears, their very slim playoff hopes get a boost as they move to five and seven. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week. Meanwhile, for the Lions, the playoffs look to be out of reach now as they drop to four and eight. And they'll be off to Minneapolis next week for a look at new U.S. Bank Stadium and a date with the Vikings. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.